Hello everyone, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing fine. Hope coronavirus is keeping you at home so that you don't get um, sick or hurt. I mean by the police. <laughs> so yeah, better stay at home, you know. It's going to be compulsory pretty soon. It's going to be part of our daily lives maybe. Uh, hopefully we all get back to our regular business. Not sure that's going to happen like regular. I don't know. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people unemployed. Who knows what's coming up? Uh, riots, uh, uh, strikes, um, more violence, uh, robberies, uh, crime in general. Who knows? I guess it's going to be interesting the next few months. Uh, for those of you who are interested, um, I do have in the uh, description a couple of uh, articles uh, that I published some years ago. I've been uh, peddling for the last 20 years that we are the last generation of humans on earth. Uh, doesn't mean you're going to believe my theory. Uh, the purpose is to understand it, uh, get a different perspective. You may not agree, fine. But it's good to get a different view that you won't see out there in mainstream. Okay, This channel in general has <laughs> totally different views on just about everything. Uh, from the extinction of Neanderthal to the dinos to, uh, to uh, space-time and quantum mechanics and string theory, the whole works. Uh, science is really in bad shape and one of the reasons it's in bad shape I'll tell you why it's uh, that for the last 400 years we have not been doing science uh, the 17th century so-called scientific revolution uh, took us on the wrong path it took us on the path of mathematics and took us on the path of doing experiments to develop technology and people confuse those two disciplines or activities with what physics is supposed to, or science is supposed to be about, which is about explaining phenomena. You need to explain a mechanism. And what we don't have today is no, not one rational explanation, uh, one rational mechanism, illustratable that you can illustrate there uh, directly, right? <clears throat> For how, especially the invisible uh, mechanisms of Mother Nature work, like, you know, gravity, um, magnetism, electricity, uh, light, so on. So yeah, you, you can see the uh, two articles. I got a couple articles and one informal article in the uh, description there. I won't deal with that today. I'm going to deal with something else today. I'm going to deal with dimensions. Dimensions. What are dimensions? Well, uh, depends on who you ask, I guess. If you're going to ask a mathematician, you're going to get one answer. If you're going to ask a rational human being, you're going to get another. <laughs> That's more or less how it goes. Okay, here's the main points that I want to make today. Okay, let's run through them real quickly. Uh, the dimensions of math have nothing to do with the dimensions of physics. Okay, math has some weird dimensions or notions of dimensions and physics uh rational physics at least <laughs> has you know uh, very simple very baby-like notions of dimensions it's so so hard so difficult that it's just length width and height that's it we have length width and height and uh, math now you need to take uh, like 10 courses at the university to know what a dimension is and you still come out without knowing okay math dimensions have to do with measurement and magnitudes okay uh, and they don't have to do with what the dimensions of physics are which are direction and orthogonality uh, perpendicularity okay physical dimensions are strictly qualitative because of that okay in math anything is and can be a dimension that's why they talk about infinite dimensions because you can you know they have so many temperatures a dimension mass is a dimension you know shoes where to buy shoes that's a dimension everything's a dimension in mathematics 
So that's why they talk about infinite dimensions. Hopefully, they're not implying that all these dimensions are nested, one inside the other, and that we live in nested universes. You know, uh, three-dimensional here, four above it, fifth, five above that, and so on down the line. You know, that, that just uh, means that you're trying to get rid of the uh, question. You're saying you're not going to answer that question because, oh, we don't know. That's the answer there, that infinite dimensions gives you. Okay? Math dimensions are actually number lines. And what these people have done is use the word uh, dimension in, um, in the context of math for magnitudes. And uh, they refer to them as, you know, dimensions or coordinates or vectors when they have nothing at all to do with dimensions, coordinates, or, or vectors, especially of those of physics. But it wouldn't matter anyways, because if, if they're going to make no distinction, like the next number uh, on, on the list there, math, no distinction between dimension, coordinate, and vector. There is no distinction. In fact, uh, dimensions are defined in terms of coordinates. What are coordinates? Just numbers. And so uh, what these people are talking about, number lines, and I don't know why they call them dimensions, but, but they cross the line into physics when they try to give you a physical interpretation, and they tell you stuff like, uh, you know, um, space-time is four-dimensional. What do they mean like that? Are, are they extrapolating the, what we understand normally by three-dimensional to four dimensions? Is, is that what they're saying? That here we have a tree, a rock, or a house that is three-dimensional, right? And now we have some other thing unimaginable, un, unvisualizable out there that is four-dimensional. They're using that as, as a, they're um, uh, extrapolating that notion of three-dimensional to four-dimensional when they say that. And uh, and so the question is, you know, is, is there something called four-dimensional out there? You know, an object. And when you find out that the fourth dimension is time, according to the mathematicians, right? Then, yeah, you have a, a, a serious problem visualizing that object because there is no such monster that is four-dimensional. Okay? It's just a lot of word wizardry. That's what it is. That's what it amounts to. Uh, math invented the curve dimension. You know, uh, you have length, width, and height, right, in physics. And they have two properties. They have um, direction. Each one of those has direction. And they have orthogonality. They have perpendicularity, one with respect to the other two. There is no such thing or notion as length without width and height. And vice versa. You, you can't have... Um, uh, height without width and length and so on. Okay, you need you need those because it has two properties. One is direction and the other one is perpendicularity. And the question is whether you can bend direction. <laughs> I mean, as far as I know, direction is always straight. You, you point straight, you know, wherever direction is. And these people are making curved dimensions. They're curving the dimensions around the spheres or whatever. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, you had a uh, couple of uh, geniuses in the 19th century. One was uh, Labachevsky, a Russian guy, and another one was, um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Riemann. And they uh, curved the triangles. Again, they were using curved dimensions, uh, you know, a curved triangle. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what a curved triangle is. So, uh, yeah, they, they modified the language a lot be, to accommodate all these notions, okay? And uh, they ended up with irrational language, primarily three words. One of them is space. The word space uh, is just outrageous, the notions they have in mathematics, okay? And as long as they keep them there in the asylum, no problem. The problem is they extrapolate there or try to bring those into physics into science and that's where we have a problem as long as they keep it in the mental asylum we have no problem they can call it whatever they want space and so they talk about space and they equate it with solids many a time because that's one of the synonyms of space um, dimension itself dimension of coordinates and uh, vectors completely irrational language that they have created 
Uh, in fact, we're, we're going to go through a list of some of the notions or the concepts that they've developed for dimensions. And you're going to see that it's just mind-boggling. Not mind-boggling in the sense that, oh, i got to study this. No, in the sense that it should all be thrown away in the garbage can. We have no need for this nonsense. Okay? Uh, and what all this shows in the end is that math is not the language of physics. Okay? A lot of them, uh, a lot of people tout it as uh, saying, oh, yeah, math is the uh, language of physics. No, uh, the language of physics is illustration. You have to be able to illustrate a mechanism so that people can watch the movie with all your illustrations there in motion and understand the mechanism. What mechanisms? Especially the invisible mechanisms. We want to see magnetism. We want to see gravity. We want to see how light works. We want to see how electricity works, how the atom works. All the invisible stuff, that's what they need to do. We know all the visible stuff, you know, but it's the invisible stuff that, they, that we uh, have no rational explanations from the establishment, from the mathematical establishment today. Why? Because they say that math and not illustration is the language of physics. That's where we have the problem. That's where the problem originates. And unfortunately, it's these people who have taken over uh, uh, so-called science, physics, they run the uh, journals and from the journals, uh, you know, you have all these um, blogs and people who more or less translate that scientific language, as they call it, uh, for the masses so that they can get a glimpse in general of what these guys are thinking or doing out there. You know, it's just, uh, and, and, it's, and it's all the same uh, group. In other words, what you have is uh, people who have blogs and, and uh, more informal magazines, and they take the uh, uh, published papers and they translate them. So uh, if you want to go in there and you want to uh, publish something, they won't let you unless you, bring, you play by their rules. You, know, you have to play uh, with math. Yeah, you have to introduce math equations. No pictures, please, because they don't give a damn at all about physical interpretations. That's why all their physical interpretations are irrational and will always be, because they don't care about them. And so, you know, people want to ask those types of questions. They want to know how the universe runs, and they'll never get an answer from a, qualita a rational answer from a qualitative point of view. They're only going to get some math nonsense that they don't understand, and then the other fellow will say, well, you know, you should have studied math like I did, you know, and then you would understand. And that's the answer. That's it. That's the answer all the time. Okay, uh, so what are the definitions of uh, dimension? Well, here we have the definition for mathematics, branch known as mathematics, a language. Is mathematics the language of uh, physics, of uh, science? Well, is... Um, is Chinese or Greek the language of physics? I mean, language is a language, right? What's different between math, has these hieroglyphics there, what's different between that and Greek? Or, I don't know, Spanish? Okay. You tell me. Okay, property of space, extension in a given direction. That's what uh, a dimension is, okay, according to the Wikipedia. A straight line has one dimension, a parallelogram has two dimensions, and a parallelopiped has, a, has three dimensions. There you see them, one, two, and three. Well, I have a problem with the first one, that number one, you know, that's a line. Uh, I'll make it a little big. Well, I can't make it bigger. I'll make it bigger for me, only not for you. But if you look at that line, you know, you can see it. And you can see it, it means that it's not one dimension, it's got two dimensions. It's got width and height. So, uh, I don't know if anyone can draw one-dimensional anything. There is no such monster, no such uh, object that is one-dimensional. So, uh, that's why they call it an extension. So, is an extension a geometric figure? Okay, because the other two are figures, no doubt about it, because the uh, number two is two-dimensional, the third one is uh, three-dimensional, no, no problem there. The problem is the first one. You know, what is a line? Is a line a geometric figure, an object? If it's defined as one-dimensional, if it's defined as extension, you know, uh, what are we talking about? 
what is that? Is that distance? Is that uh, distance traveled? Displacement, maybe? What is that? And until you, you zero in on those key questions, on those key words that they use, you know, uh, these people are, are just uh, giving you word wizardry. That's all they're doing. That's why they claim they can't define the point line or the plane. Okay? Generalization of this property to spaces with curvilinear extension. Spaces? Spaces have extension? I thought space was nothing. I thought space was vacuum. And this is the issue. The issue is they use these words space. They bring it in there. Uh, and they're talking about spaces, meaning geometric figures such as planes and or categories of geometric figures such as planes and solids. They call them spaces. That's where we start getting uh, a little nebulous with the uh, jargon. Okay, As the surface of a sphere. So here they have a curved dimension again. You know, I don't know how, if you, how, how you can curve uh, direction. But if you can figure it out, please let me know, okay? The generalization of this property to vector spaces and to Hilbert space, okay? The generalization of this property to fractals, which can have dimensions that are non-integer real numbers. Who cares? Who cares what, uh, uh, you know, what, what do you mean dimensions that have real numbers? What's, that, what's dimension have to do with real numbers? And again, you know, anyone dealing with fractals usually is, you know, a little cuckoo in the head. These people are fascinated by these patterns they see in nature. I don't know, uh, the uh, snowflake, uh, maybe the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, stem of a plant. You know, they, they look for these patterns and they're fascinated by them. They call them fractals. They study them to exhaustion and all that's nonsense. Uh, we don't need fractals on planet Earth or anywhere. Fractals are, are useless for, for almost everything. There, there's nothing we can do with fractals. What's the point of fractals? Fractals is nonsense. That's what it is. And a lot of people are just absolutely fascinated by those patterns they see, I guess, uh, uh, they see uh, information there. Mother Nature's telling them something. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, last one, extension in time. Space-time has three dimensions of space and one of time, okay? Whatever space-time is, when you look it up, you always find that fishnet there, you know? That's, that's what you always find. Then they take, tell you not to take it uh, seriously, not to uh, take it literally. Well, uh, I'm, I'm taking it literally because that's what's in front of me. That's why I take it literally. If, if you don't like that, you know, bring me space-time. The real McCoy. I mean, that's what they always put a three dimensional fishnet projected onto a two dimensional platform or background. And I'm not supposed to take that literally. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to interpret from this? Here they have the, the Earth sitting on space time and uh, on this fishnet. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Um, and here we have Mr. Stephen Hawking, and what the, he he died a couple years ago, and what did he say? Well, he in his book he goes in there and he uh, has a space-time diagram, but notice that he's uh, he's got space as the coordinates or as the dimensions or as the vectors. Who knows what those are? Space. Never saw, never heard of a uh, dimension called space. He, he, is he, the issue is that he says, they, the mathematicians say that length, width, and height, well, that's not what they mean by dimensions. But then that's what they show. They show length, width, and height. They call length and width space. They call height time. Supposedly, those, are, those three are 90 degrees to each other. So they're depicting dimensions of physics, okay? And that's what they want you to understand that they're talking about physics because they're going to reach conclusions, uh, physical interpretations, what they, which they always say they've proven. Okay? They're going to shove it down your throat as proof. And what do they show? They show uh, space and space. Uh, and in the uh, elevation or height or who knows what that is there, uh, they, they have time. Can you pit time against space? 
Does that make sense? Can you pit time against length and width? Is time, does time flow at 90 degrees to length and width? And again, they, they put arrows, but uh, length and width don't have arrows. You know, length and width are qualitative um, uh, lines, you know, uh, parameters or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they don't grow. And see, they put arrows like if they grow. Time grows. You, they, uh, the arrow for time is okay, but for space, whatever space is, there's no dimension called space, but that's what, what he puts. So, yeah, you, you got to look at all this in, in, in the proper context. What are they talking about? Are they talking about math? Or are they talking about length, width, and height, which belongs to physics? Because we can all understand length, width, and height. And that's three-dimensional. That's what we call it. You know, a table is three-dimensional if it has three, length, width, and height. The one that's sitting here, you know, it's, it's a three-dimensional table. No problem there. But these people are talking with some, about some abstraction out there. And then they hint or insinuate through their drawings that they're talking about the real world. And they're introducing length, width, and height. And, and they're calling it space and time. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about space and time, whatever that is, uh, is time running perpendicular to space? Is, is that what they're showing there? You know, it, it makes no sense what these people are talking about, what they're illustrating, and what they later on say, well, don't take it literally. <laughs> it's like, you know, well, why, why did I attend this, uh, this conference if, if I'm not supposed to take any of this for real? Okay, what are the dimensions of physics according to the wise men of, of our days? Okay, and again, this is from the Wikipedia. It says, uh, measurement in length, width, and thickness. Thickness? Thickness is a dimension. Again, uh, a lot of it to do with that next word there, magnitude, size. Matter has dimension. Okay, topology, a magnitude that la, 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 serves to define the location of an element within a given set as a, of a point on a line, an object in space, or an event in space-time. Well, let's look at these. Uh, here we have these. Okay, put them over here. Okay, there you have a point on a line, an object in space, okay, or in a space, and an event in space-time, which is that fishnet you see there, you know, the curved fishnet. Three-dimensional fishnet projected onto two-dimension. Uh, nothing there is four-dimensional at all. Okay, That's the space-time fishnet. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go on the internet. Just put the word space-time and you'll always find this, this ridiculous fishnet. That's what they show. What is that fishnet supposed to be? What gives shape to the fishnet? In other words, what's the white stuff in between the, uh, the, um, the fishnet there that gives... Uh, the fishnet some background. What is that white stuff? Is that thought? I mean, you know, <laughs> these people uh, put whatever nonsense there and uh, you're supposed to look at that and say, well, don't take it literally. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> um, so what is, does any of this have anything to do with physics? I mean, here we have point on a line. There are no such things as points and lines, zero-dimensional points and one-dimensional lines in the real world of physics. There's no such thing as uh, uh, that last one, space-time fishnet. They can't illustrate it because they cannot even imagine it. So uh, if we cannot even imagine it, are they talking about the real world? Is the real world unimaginable? I mean, as far as I know, uh, when uh, from here on now to the end of infinity, where, wherever... Uh, the last bit of matter in the universe is, it's all 3D. You know, uh, from Earth outwards, it's all 3D. You can just run three coordinates or three uh, dimensions if you want, if you want to look at the whole bit of matter, freeze the world, the, the universe, and just put uh, dimensions there to measure all the matter in the, in the universe. Well, uh, you can only put three perpendicular lines. You can't put a, a fourth perpendicular line to those three. It's just that simple. And that tells you that everything from here on out is three-dimensional, using that, that notion of dimensions. Where is this fourth dimension, fifth dimension, or like in string theory, you got 10 and 26 dimensions. 
just absolute nonsense that has nothing to do with reality. Okay, and then they fix it by saying, well, there, there are tiny dimensions that are curly cued around, you know, hidden from our view. <laughs> These people are deranged uh, in their head, you know. Okay, um, another notion is the number of elements in a finite basis of a given vector space. What is a vector space? Okay, let's see. Uh, well, here we have a uh, number of elements. Well, how many elements do we have there? Well, we have a couple Indians. We have bows, arrows. I don't know, maybe 10 elements. I mean, what does this have to do with physics? What they're saying here is that you can add two magnitudes. Those arrows represent magnitudes. You can add V plus W and get a third arrow. What, what is that third arrow? Is that an engine arrow? Is that one of those uh, darts that some of these natives throw at you? No, no. Those arrows are just numbers, magnitudes. That's what they're showing you. And so, you know, they, they depict them with arrows, and one thinks they're talking about arrows, but they're not. They're, they're talking about numbers, which somehow they're trying to depict so that you can get a visualization of what they're more or less talking about. So, yeah, uh, lots of problem with all that. And then there was, uh, let's see this one here. Then you have this one, uh, the last one there. What was it? Uh, any, um, oh, any, uh, for physics, any of a set of basic kinds of quantity as mass, length, and time. Is that what, what a dimension is? Mass, length, and time are dimensions? Well, let's find out. Let's see. Here, here I try to illustrate. <laughs> Here's uh, mass, length, and time. Okay, uh, Does mass go run perpendicular to time or length? Does time run perpendicular to length and mass? I mean, what, what are these dimensions that they talk about? They, they use the word dimension every two seconds, especially in relativity. And this is what they're talking about. They're talking about nonsense that, you know, doesn't fit our notions of what three-dimensionality uh, means or what length, width, and height means. So if, if that's not what a dimension means in mathematics, what does it mean? Well, what do you mean when you say mass is a dimension? What do you mean that when you say time is a dimension? How is time in any way similar to length? Are we talking about distance traveled? Are we talking about uh, a length of a table? Or are we talking about three mutually perpendicular directions known as length, width, and height, which are qualitative, 100% qualitative. You know, so, so the issue is that these people have lost track of what they're talking about, especially as long as they keep it in math, no problem. The problem is when they bring it into physics and try to tell you, we did all the mathematics here, we got all the equations, we got all the numbers, we got all the um, measurements and... Uh, and um, quantities, the, the amounts, the magnitudes, and now they're going to extrapolate that and try to give you a physical interpretation for how this universe works. Can they tell you how magnet attracts another? No, they, they can't tell you that, but what they can tell you is what gravity is. It's warpage of time. That's what it is. They're warping space and time, both, space-time. They warp space-time, that means they're warping time. Because they turn time into a stick. And now they can bend it or warp it or, you know, who knows what. That's what they're doing. And, of course, after that they say, well, you're not supposed to take the analogy literally. Of course, you, <laughs> because I can't even imagine warping time. How am I supposed to even take it literally? There's nothing literal about it. It's all absolute nonsense to say that gravity is the warpage of time. That's, if that's a mathematical description, they can keep it within math. Don't bring any of that into physics. Don't tell me that in physics, in science, in the rational world, that you're going to warp time. Okay, this is, this is when it gets dangerous, when they say, well, time is a dimension, we're going to bend that dimension, we're going to curve it, which is what, you know, they, the first few uh, uh, the pictures there that I put uh, show, okay? Okay, uh, what's a formal definition of dimension? Because it really, it, it, they have a single, math and phys for them is the same thing. 
And so they, they have these, they try to give you an idea that there's a little difference between physics and math. No, uh, physics and math use this, no, use this notion of dimension in both uh, math phys, by the way, okay? They use this notion of dimension in their so-called disciplines, okay? In physics and mathematics, the dimension of a mathematical space, what is it? The minimum number of coordinates needed to specify any point within it, okay? So what are we saying? We're saying that a dimension is a coordinate. What is a coordinate? Well, we can... See, you, when you look up the word coordinate, you won't find a definition. What you'll find is coordinate system. But it's okay, we go to coordinate system and it gives you an idea what a coordinate is. Okay, so what is it? A coordinate system is a system, okay, that uses one or more numbers or coordinates. So what is a coordinate? Another number. So what is the dimension? Well, a minimum number of coordinates, meaning a minimum number of numbers. That's, that's the definition of a dimension in mathematics and math phys. Okay, they, it's the minimum number of numbers. Number of numbers, that's the definition they have today. Is that what, uh, what three-dimensional means, that you're, you're, you got three numbers? You know, maybe you should play them at the lottery or something, you know? I mean, what does this have to do with science? What does this have to do with, with physics, with anything, okay? And what are they used for to uniquely determine the position of the points or other geometric elements on a manifold such as the Euclidean space? We're going to put points on spaces, on vacuum, on, on nothing. Okay, fine. But the, the interesting thing is, is the position of a point. And a point, what is a point? Well, it's, it's a position. It's a location. That's what a, the word point means. So we got the position of a position, and uh, the dimension is a number of numbers. <laughs> you figure it out. You see if you can use any of that for, for anything, okay? Of course, none of this makes any sense and you will not be able to make sense from a geometric true geometric in other words physical point of uh, perspective point of view okay if they keep want to keep all that nonsense in math keep it there please don't bring it into physics but it's when they try to bring it into physics that's when we run into trouble because we cannot use these deranged irrational uh ridiculous notions that they've developed in mathematics we cannot use them in physics for anything nothing at all it's all total trash okay so that's the issue the issue is when they try to bring it over if they want to use it in math to do their their asylum stuff go ahead and use it i don't care but don't bring it into physics okay so let's see what we have um here we have um um space because we need a definition of space. They use this word space every two seconds. What is space? Well, they say uh, space, again, this is uh, from the wiki. Space is the boundless three-dimensional extent. Space is an extent, whatever that is. Is that a physical object? I mean, it says three-dimensional. Why would they use the, the adjective three-dimensional to qualify extent? Are they saying this thingy, whatever they're talking about, this space? is uh, growing or extending or pointing or facing in three mutually perpendicular directions? Is that what the three-dimensional adjective there means? Is that what it stands for? Three-dimensional extent? Okay, but then we have another word, the boundless. Are they saying uh, space is infinite? It's a physical object that is infinite in extent, it extends forever? Keep that in mind, okay? In which objects and events have relative position and direction. Okay, at least they got one direction, okay? Yeah, direction is part of it, but uh, they forgot orthogonality. They never mentioned that. The fact that length, width, and height are 90 degrees to each other, they draw them that way, or at least they project them that way on two, two dimensions, implying that it's they're all at 90 degrees to each other, but then they never use that. They say, oh, but that's not what we mean by dimensions anyway. We, Dimensions are, are important stuff like mass and time and temperature. Yeah, I don't know if temperature runs at 90 degrees to time, you know. Physical space, physical space. Oh, there's a physical space, okay. Is often conceived in three linear dimensions. It is? By whom? By the loonies at the asylum? I mean, what do you mean physical space, three linear dimensions? What is this? What are they talking about? 
every word is, is irrational in this context. With time to be part of a boundless, again boundless, whatever that means, four-dimensional continuum. It's a continuum. Continuum, what could that mean? That there's no accidents, no uh, interruptions? Is that what uh, space-time is? Uh, known as space-time. A continuum? What is a continuum? Is that a physical? Oh, can you bring a continuum to the conference so we can see it put in the middle of the, of the room so that we know what a continuum is? So all they have is all these concepts, extents and uh, continuums. That's what they're talking about. That's what space and space-time are. The concept of space is considered to be blah, 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 of importance to an understanding of the physical universe. The concept of space? I mean, these are the questions. Is space an object or a concept? Does space have shape or not? It's a black or white issue. Is space a physical object? If it is, if it's got dimensions, as they say, it's three-dimensional, please bring a, a, a space to the conference next time. I want you to put it in the middle of the room so that we can all see it from all sides, all around. I want to see your three-dimensional space. What the hell are they talking about? What do you mean a three-dimensional space? No, space is what's out there between the Earth and the Moon. That's called space. It's known as vacuum. It's nothing. That's what it is. Nothing. Nothing that which has no shape. Something that which has shape. Nothing that which has no shape. There are antonyms. Now we can use these words consistently, rationally, scientifically. But to say that, you know, space is three-dimensional, well, just bring it to the conference room. We'll find out if it is. Just prove it. <laughs> They like to prove everything, prove that space is three-dimensional. You know, I want you to bring a bit of it, you know, illustrate it, and, and then we'll know it's three-dimensional. You know, uh, if someone says, is your table three-dimensional, say, yeah. And can you prove it? Yeah. And you bring the table in. You say, see, it's three-dimensional. It's got length, width, and height, 90 degrees to each other. We're, you're done. You proved it <laughs> by bringing your table. Okay, do the same thing with space. Bring space in, show me that it's three-dimensional. It's got length, width, and height, because that's what three-dimensional means, okay? Okay, uh, so uh, what was this other word? Bound, uh, that it's non-bounded or it's uh, unbounded, okay? Unbounded, it's the unbounded space. What do they mean by that? Well, here, fortunately, we have uh, Hawking, Stephen Gawking, and he's going to tell us what uh, uh, no bounds means, no unbounded. And the problem here is he's got two notions. One has to do with time, and then in another part of his book, he talks about something totally different, which is incessant walking. Okay? He says in the first one, space-time was finite, but had no boundary. Finite, no boundary. Here's a, a ball, you know, it's finite in the sense that, you know, it, 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 it ends here, right? It's a discrete object. And then it's, uh, it's bounded. So what does he mean? Uh, how can it have uh, be finite but no boundary? Uh, this has boundary and finite, both. How can you have, you know, there seems to be a contradiction somewhere. How can you have uh, uh, something that is finite and not have a boundary? And he says it had no beginning, no moment of creation. Which is, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, what does that have to do with finiteness and boundariness? Okay. And then uh, the next one, uh, he says, the universe is not fi infinite in space, but neither does space have any boundary. Okay. No boundary for space. And what is he talking about? Gravity is so strong that space is bent around unto itself. These guys are bending nothing. I mean, before you bend space, please bring it to the conference room so we know what you're talking about. What is, three di what is this three-dimensional space that you're talking about that gravity bends it around itself? What are they talking about? What is this nonsense? What is this jargon, this, this language that they develop? Making it rather like the surface of the earth. Okay, two-dimensional, right? I guess the surface, that's what they say it is. And if... Um, one keeps traveling. Now he's talking about traveling, tr trying to prove that it's infinite or unbounded, right? Uh, in a certain direction on the surface of the earth, one never comes up against an in, uh, impassable barrier or falls over the edge, but eventually comes back to where one started. 
So how does that relate to the first one? The first one he says had no beginning. The second one, he's got a different notion of what he means by unbounded, which is, you know, that you can walk around uh, the earth incessantly. Here we have one fellow, you know, he's walking around the earth or around the ball at least, you know, and he's walking incessantly. Okay, is that what unbounded means? I mean, that ball there or that earth or whatever that is, uh, that's bounded. It's got a, it's finite. It ends at that surface, but walking incessantly is not unbounded. He's not walking unboundedly. He's walking incessantly. You know, uh, Stephen Gawking should learn uh, language before he can uh, say some of these, uh, these things that he says or that he said. Okay, uh, here we have um, another mention from uh, Stephen Gawking regarding dimensions. Again, uh, these people are demented. Uh, I think uh, uh, they have they suffer from dementia. That's what dimension probably means in mathematics. The fourth dimension, time. Fourth dimension, time is a dimension. Thought it was a number line. Is finite in extent, okay? But it is like a line with two ends or boundaries, okay? So we got a line. It's got an end, okay? Fine. A beginning and an end. We shall see later that when one combines general relativity with the uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics, it is possible for both space and time to be finite without any edges or boundaries. Because again, they're talking about stuff that has nothing to do with the word boundary. Because anything that is finite by definition has boundary. What they're talking about is not boundary, but saying that there's no, you can run around in circles, come back to your starting point, you won't find a, a wall. That's what they're saying. That's got nothing to do with boundary. So, so the way they show their unbounded universe, finite but unbounded universe, is with word wizardry. What they're doing is confusing concepts here. They're confusing the words, what they mean. The word unbounded it has nothing to do with walking around. Okay, unbounded means the same thing as finite. If, if they want to use the correct word, they should say uh, the universe is finite and you can walk around it incessantly. That's, that's totally different. It's got nothing to do with whether the uh, universe has edges, boundaries, a fence. Okay, let's keep the context in the right place. Okay, that's the problem. And he says more nonsense. The idea that one could go right around the universe and end up where one started makes good science fiction, but it doesn't have much practical significance because it can be shown that the universe would recollapse uh, to zero size before one could get round. I don't even want to wait for his proof. I mean, total absolute garbage nonsense. These uh, and these guys are paid big bucks to say this not idiocy. They are. It's it's unbelievable. These guys, uh, I mean, he died, but there's a whole bunch of others behind him that say the same nonsense. They get a lot of money for saying this idiocy. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. You should take it with a pinch of salt, okay? But what's interesting is after they do all their fancy footwork, they, uh, here you have a couple of them. One is uh, Stephen Gawking, and the other one is uh, Leo Suskin. Uh, he's a professor at Stanford University. And what do these people say? Well, they say can't, they can't imagine their own contraption, their own space-time. And here you have the first one from Stephen Gawking. He says, uh, it is often helpful to think of the four coordinates of an event as specifying its position in a four-dimensional space called space-time. Okay? It is impossible to imagine a four-dimensional space. So if it's impossible to imagine, maybe, maybe there's no such thing. Maybe that's why. And what they do is they go through this rigmarole, uh, which you'll see next here, uh, where they try to show you why we can't imagine it. It says, I can't say, now close your eyes and view in your head five dimensions, because I can't do it either. Okay, at least he concedes that. All I can do is say, take X, Y, and Z, and add V and W. Eventually, a person with this type of mathematical background begins to develop mathematical intuitions for things. In other words, you get brainwashed, okay? You, you start accepting stuff that is unimaginable, you know, like spirits and heaven and hell, you know, okay? Mathematics, uh, uh, they, they don't need the same kind of visualization, so we're stuck needing mathematics because evolution 
He blames it on evolution. Uh, didn't equip us to visualize 11 dimensional space times. So uh, the fault is of the monkeys who gave birth to uh, Leo Susskind, you know, all these uh, forefathers that we had, uh, they, they didn't give us the right tools. We, we, we're still stuck in three dimensions and these guys are already at the 11th dimension. I mean, what does the 11th dimension have to do with reality? This is all garbage, nonsense, poppycock that is being taught at the university level. These people should be executed for, for saying such nonsense. It's garbage. It's ridiculous. It's not even, not even funny. Anyways, um, the other day I showed, and here I'll re, re, uh, reinforce it. This is the difference between the uh, definitions of math and the definitions of physics. In physics, the dimensions are straightforward, length, width, and height. Everybody can understand. It's just three mutually perpendicular directions. That's essentially what it is. Uh, what are coordinates? Well, the first point is that Unlike dimensions that point outwards, uh, dimensions point inwards towards an object. You need three uh, sticks that are uh, 90 degrees to each other to locate a, a, uh, an object in the universe. You know, uh, that's, these are the only three possible mutually perpendicular directions. You cannot imagine a fourth direction, okay? And they point towards the, uh, the object always. Uh, vectors, that has to do with motion, not with location or orientation. Vectors are motion. Three mutually perpendicular directions in which an object can move. That's what vectors are. Okay? And it's depth, breadth, and elevation. Sometimes you'll find that these people confuse length with breadth, and they put latitude in there. They mix them all up because to them they're all what? Number lines, which you see on the bottom. That's what, uh, what these uh, so-called dimensions, coordinates, and vectors really are as far as mathematics is concerned. They are number lines, and these people call these number lines, you know, uh, dimensions, coordinates, vectors. They use these terms which have nothing to do with what they're doing. They should call them all number lines. But see, if they uh, call them number lines, then they can't say that space-time is four-number-lined. <laughs> you wouldn't understand that. You would say, well, what do you mean it's four-number-lined? No, no, it's four-dimensional. Oh, I understand that. It's 4D. I just can't imagine. It's like 3D but 4D, right? No, it's four-number-lined. They're talking about four number lines that can... Uh, converge upon an object to establish the locations with magnitudes, with numbers. That's all they're talking about. And that's totally different than what we say when we say that something is three-dimensional. But they use the adjective four-dimensional to uh, modify or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, qualify space-time. So they treat space-time first as a physical object, even though it's got the word time in there. Because they're going to do their, their uh, gravity, their geome geometric gravity, by bending space-time. So they have to turn it into a physical object. And then they say, well, you cannot imagine it, but you need four dimensions, one of which is time, to locate a point within space-time. So it's a circular uh, argument. Uh, you need, what is space-time? Space-time is what you need four dimensions to locate a point within space-time. That's what, what space-time is. <laughs> So it's, uh, uh, and again, if they keep it within the asylum, the mathematical asylum, no problem. They can, all the patients there can do whatever they want with that. And hopefully someone throws in some coronavirus in there and just gets rid of all of them. But don't bring it into physics. Don't bring anything, the coronavirus or, or the dimensions of math into physics. They have no place in physics. In physics, it's length, width, and height. Kindergarten stuff. We're done. That's it. That's all we need. Uh, dimensions four, okay, and and they're all qualitative. We have no no ne no necessity, no need for magnitudes, okay, because you cannot explain anything by putting magnitudes. You're going to explain a mechanism. You're not going to describe mathematically. That's why math is not the language of physics. Okay, there was another issue, and that's uh, this issue of curves. What is a curve? Well, it turns out that you know the curve. Uh, uh, some curves are straight. <laughs> Unbelievable. And that's how they ended up with uh, curved dimensions because I guess, you know, it doesn't matter to them. Well, here, here are a couple definitions. Curve, an object similar to a line, okay, which does not have to be straight. 
meaning that sometimes it can be straight. Is that what they're insinuating here? Sometimes uh, dimensions can be straight. Sometimes they can be curved. And uh, that's what a curve is, a curved direction, I guess. <laughs> okay. A curve is the image of a continuous function from an interval to a topological space. Okay. And then uh, dictionary.com says a continuously bending line without angles. That more or less is the notion we have in physics. You know, continuously bending line, that's what a curve is. We never confuse a curve with a straight line, but these people say, well, a curve can also be straight. Because to them, it's a function. It's a function. It's an equation. It's a bunch of variables and numbers. That's what it means to them. It, 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 it has nothing to do with what a curve is, what, what a rational human being understands for the word curve. You know, you ask anyone, uh, did the car curve? Yeah, he, he, he went in a, in a curve. That's why we call, <laughs> call it a curve, because it bends, it, it, it warps. And if you see a straight line, you don't say that's a curve. No, you say it's a straight line. Nobody confuses a straight line with a curve except mathematicians. And again, they can keep that nonsense within mathematics. Just don't bring it into physics, into the real world. Mathematics, uh, also uh, dictionary.com, uh, a collection of points whose coordinates are continuous functions, again, of a single independent variable. Yeah, they're talking about function. They're talking about nonsense that has nothing to do with the word curve. Okay, and again, if they keep it in math, fine, just keep it there. Don't bring it here. There are no fewer than three, dis uh, I like the, this comes from the Wolfram Math World. And what you see there says there are no fewer than three distinct notions of curve throughout mathematics. So you can see that they have all these definitions. One, one guy uses one definition, the other guy uses another, you know, and so we don't know what a curve is because everybody's got his own notion. It's all ad hoc. When they need it for this, they say, well, here I'm going to say that a curve is this. And the other guy said, no, well, for me, a curve is this other thing. And everybody's doing their own little thing. And here you have, uh, there's one for topology, the other one is for algebraic geometry, and the other one for analytic geometry. So they have all these notions of what a curve is, not even worth reading. Okay? In other words, no one knows in mathematics what a curve is. You, you, you got to take them to kindergarten to show what a curve is. You know, you draw a little curved line and say, that's a curve. See how simple it was all these years? And why is this a problem? Well, here you have one bozo. His name was Arthur Eddington, and this guy supposedly proved that light curves around the sun, thus um, verifying, uh, confirming, proving Einstein's uh, uh, notion of uh, theory of general relativity of 1915-1916. Uh, and he said, it's true. Look, see, we, we proved it. We went out there and we saw that we could see light coming around the sun, okay, during an eclipse. And there you have the, uh, the uh, notion. You see there's a star in, far away, and light goes around the sun, supposedly because the sun weighs down this canvas known as space-time, which you're not supposed to take literally, right? And it bends it, and uh, it curves light. So they said, look, uh, space-time bent light. That's, you'll, you'll hear this constantly. They use that word, bent. And one of the problems there is that, no, we're not talking about bending, because if we're talking about a photon, a little ball, okay, we're talking about a little ball, a discrete little ball that's coming, right? Or even a, a little wave, because they, they say that a photon is really a wave, okay? So are these waves discrete? Where are they? What is a photon? Isn't a photon treated as a discrete entity, a little ball? And if it's a little ball, then you cannot talk about bending light, about bending a photon. No, you can say that it swerved. You can say that it deflected. That would be the word that you would use. You would not say you bent a ball. You say that the ball was deflected. And these people are talking about bent light as if... There, there's a cont continuity in light from the star all the way to the earth and you're bending it, you're warping light. Why? Because the weight of gravity is so so heavy, you know, it's, gravity pulls on, on light so much that it bends light. What is it bending? A beam? A ray? Is that, is that what we're bending? 
So again, they have all these retarded notions that they, because they have contradictions, they have developed all these re retarded, ridiculous notion of what space is, what curve means, what bent means, what a dimension is, what, co what a coordinate is. They have all these incredible notions, these, this language that they develop. And unless, you know, you really took a course in the university, you can't follow these guys because you don't really know what they're talking about in physical terms. But they claim to be talking in physical terms. They claim to be interpreting the real world out there. They're the priests of the modern world, as I call the mathematicians. You know, these people are telling you, look, uh, we can tell you how this universe works, but in order for you to understand us, you got to take a course, high-level course at the university. And so they can't bring it down to you because, you know, they cannot illustrate it on the board. They say, look, here's the equation. Here's the numbers. <clears throat> and the only way you're going to understand it is if you take a course. And when you take the course, you still won't understand because you can't explain it in normal terms. You can only talk it to another mathematician and they, they say, well, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And what are they doing? Descriptions. All they're doing is descriptions. That's all that math can do. Well, anyways, uh, uh, Arthur Eddington didn't prove squat, okay? Uh, and here it is. You'll find in, um, in the Wikipedia, you'll find tests of general relativity. Supposedly all these tests have proven uh, general relativity. It's the evidence for the theory, okay? Observational evidence for the theory. And you'll see several of them there. No, no, let, let there be no doubt. No one proves anything in science, in physics, okay? No one proves anything in there. Uh, proof means that they convinced you. You drank the Kool-Aid. That's what proof means. There is no such thing as proof in science. Proof belongs strictly to religion. It means you were convinced, you know, and no one's going to convince you otherwise, that such and such is true because they proved it to you. You, were, you convinced yourself that it's true. Proof is not part of science. Science we don't prove. In science we explain a mechanism objectively so that you understand it. Then everybody goes his own ways and reaches his own conclusions. That's the way it's done in science. When someone talks about evidence and proof that they observed and now they can prove and now that they verified, they're talking religion. And uh, especially when, you know, they can't put it in normal terms. If they're not going to use the words consistently because they have 10, 20, 30, 100 definitions for each word. You know, they have all kinds of dimensions. We don't, we don't know what a dimension is. And they say it's just a bunch of numbers. Well, if it's a bunch of numbers, why did you call it a dimension? Call it a number. Call it a magnitude, call it an amount, you know, quantity, whatever you want to call it. But don't call it a dimension. Dimension is very clear what it is. Length within height because that's what the notion of three-dimensionality. So it's, it's the language that's been contorted. And the big problem, again, is when they extrapolate that language into physics. Okay, with that, uh, we'll see you next time around. We're going to continue on geometry. I want to make sure we cover just about every base we can uh, with geometry before we let go. So we'll see you then and take care. Bye-bye.